Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about solving um, linear absolute value equations and inequalities. Okay, and linear ones are not so bad to deal with and fortunately these are probably a lot of times the ones that you see the most often. So, the first case it says if you have the absolute value of something equal to something else, I mean the thing on the right hand side is either going to have to be zero or positive or there's going to be no solutions. Um, but it says basically you have to solve two equations. One says you just remove the bars, set A equal to B. The other it says you remove the bars and tack a negative onto the right hand side. Likewise, if you had to solve this absolute value of A equals the absolute value of B, you would turn it into the exact same two equations that you would have to solve. Okay, convince yourself why this makes sense, you know, remember absolute value just makes something positive at the end if it's not already positive. Here it says if you have the absolute value of A less than or equal to something, you basically just um, take negative B to B and sandwich A in between and then you have to solve that compound inequality. It says if you have A greater than or equal to B, it says you get A greater than or equal to B or A less than or equal to negative B that you have to solve. Okay, so I'm going to do uh, these three examples here. X minus 1 equals 4. Um, absolute value of 2X plus 3 is less than 15. So again, these are absolute values. Um, and then the absolute value of 2X minus 1 over 3 greater than or equal to 5, 6. Okay, so for the first one, again, it says we have the absolute value of x minus 1 equals 4. Well, this was our one case. It says you turned it into the equations x minus 1 equals 4, so you just remove the bars. Or it says you turn it into the equation x minus 1 equals negative 4. Okay, well, here we just add 1 to both sides. We'll simply get x equals 5 as one solution. And the other one, we will add 1 to both sides, and we'll get x equals negative 3 as our other solution. Okay, so you can check both that, in fact, both of those would work. If you plug 5 in, you get 5 minus 1, or 4. If you plug negative 3 in, you get negative 3 minus 1, which is negative 4, but the absolute value of that is just positive 4. So again, these are kind of, you know, nice in the sense that they're linear and there's just single sort of, uh, you know, there's not a lot of um, absolute values floating around. So things can get a little worse in those situations that, that aren't so nice. But So, okay, so the next one here are 2x plus 3. The absolute value of that quantity is less than 15. Well, it says in that case, all we have to do is we remove the bars. In my example I had less than or equal to. If it's less than you just make it the same thing. Um, and then it says whatever numbers on the right side you again put the inequality in between negative of that number and positive of that number. Okay and this is what's known as a compound inequality. We're really just solving the inequality negative 15 less than 2x plus 3 and then we're also solving the inequality 2x plus 3 less than 15, except we're going to do them at the same time. Okay, so the idea is, I mean, if you were going to solve, say, 2x plus 3 less than 15, the first thing I would do would be subtract 3, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to subtract 3. We also have to do it to the left side here as well, okay? Because, again, imagine if you had the inequality negative 15 less than 2x plus 3, we would be solving it by subtracting 3 from both sides. So again, we're just doing two steps at once. So negative 15 minus 3, that's simply negative 18, less than, now I've only got 2x left over in the middle, less than 15 minus 3, which is 12. Same idea, if I wanted to get the x by itself, I would divide by 2 on both sides. If I wanted to get the x by itself, I would divide by 2 on both sides. So I'm going to divide by 2 everywhere. Remember with inequalities, if you multiply or divide by a negative number, your inequalities flip. Well, we don't have that case here, but uh, just a little refresher, don't forget about that. So negative 18 over 2 is negative 9. Ugh, sorry. Negative 9 less than, well, not 2x, but just plain old x, less than 6. 
Okay, and you can always check this. You know, take a number between negative 9 and 6, plug it back into the original inequality, um, see if you get a number on the left side so that the absolute value of it is less than 15. Well, certainly 0 is a number in there, so you could even check, well, 0 certainly works. So, just a little quick guess um, to make sure everything's at least uh, not, not blatantly incorrect. All right, last but not least, we'll do uh, the 2x minus 1 over 3, the absolute value of that, greater than or equal to 5 over 6. So now we have to solve 2x minus 1 over 3, greater than or equal to 5 over 6. Or it says that the other inequality that will also give us our values is 2x minus 1 over 3, less than or equal to negative 5 over 6. Okay, and this makes sense. I think most people, the first one's intuitively clear. The second one makes sense. I mean, if I can make the, the thing on the left less than or equal to negative 5, 6, you know, maybe I make the left side negative 20, for example, well, the absolute value of negative 20 will be positive 20 and will satisfy my inequality. Okay, so on this one, um, to get rid of my fractions, I look at the denominator, 3 and 6. I think what's the smallest number both of those go into, which would be 6. So I'll multiply both sides by that um, to get rid of my fractions. So on the right side, we'll just get 5 after we cancel out the 6s. On the left side, 6 over 3 is 2, and I have to multiply that by 2x minus 1. So if I distribute, I get 2x times, excuse me, 2 times 2x, which is 4x. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, greater than or equal to 5. And then I add 2 to both sides to get 7 divide by 4, divide by 4, we'll get x greater than or equal to 7 fourths. It says, or the other solutions that will work, we'll do the same thing here, is we'll multiply both sides by 6, by 6, by 6. The same thing will happen on the left, my 6 over 3 will become a 2, and I'll have 2x minus 1, less than or equal to, this time, negative 5. And again, all I have to do is solve. So if I distribute, I get 4x minus 2, less than or equal to negative 5. If I add 2, add 2, I'll get 4x less than or equal to negative 3. Divide by 4, divide by 4, we'll get x less than or equal to negative 3 fourths. And that'll be our solution. Okay, so it says either x has to be something great, a number greater than or equal to 7 fourths, or it says it has to be a number less than or equal to negative 3 fourths. Okay, so one or the other. All right, so I hope that hope this uh, this these uh, basic examples help you out. If you need to see something more complicated or if this doesn't make sense, just send me an email um, or post a comment, and hopefully somebody can uh, help make sense out of it for you.